Hey, hi fans and friends. This is uh, Bob from Bob's Barn Workshop. I just wanted to let you know that uh, I know it's been a while since I released a video. And here comes my cat. She, we've been away for the weekend and she misses me. Um, I've got a lot of videos backed up that I need to pop to edit and, and release. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to release about three videos in a row finishing up the kitchen cabinet build for the lake property. And uh, so that's what this little explanation is about. i got lots of other stuff coming up. And, uh, but I just wanted to get all three of those released. We're down to almost complete finish at the lake uh, cabinets. We, uh, all I have left to do is finish the shelves. I have the shelves built and of course I need to get the hardware, the little hooks that are pushing the pins, pinholes, and uh, put the finish on them, the polyurethane, and I need to build four drawer boxes and drawer fronts. So, so let's see these videos and uh, get it done. All right, Bob here again. We're on our way back to the barn. You know, earlier this uh, fall and everything, uh, I was making cabinets for the lake. And then winter came and I didn't do too much. Well, what I'm doing now is I had milled all the wood to make all the cabinet doors slightly oversized. And I think I showed you me uh, gluing up a couple of the doors earlier. So that's all I'm doing right now. So I'm gluing up these doors, the tongue and groove doors. Now if you notice on the finished doors over here that I got waiting, there's no tongue or groove on either edge. I had to plan that out when I milled the wood and I kept that in mind. So that's done. They're about two inches long and a little bit too wide. So I'm gonna run them through the table saw and stuff to clean them up when the time comes. Uh, I've got six done today. I've got a three more here to do and I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more to do there. So only 11 doors left to glue up. But as I said, after the glue dries completely, I need to scrape off the drips and stuff on the back, cut them to size, and then we'll do some final sanding. I'm gonna run a, after I get them cut to size, I'll run a chamfer all the way around the perimeter and uh, put three coats of polyurethane on them and they'll be good to hang. I have to bore the holes for the hinges. Typical bloom type hinges have a 35 millimeter hole in the back. This is the top, of course, but it'll be in the back. That holds the recessed base of the, of the hinge. And I already have the hinges. So after we get them all cut to size so that we know exactly where the hinges have to be placed, I'll drill them all before I do the final finishing and sanding because I don't want to scrape them up while I run them through. I'll run them all through the drill press with the 35 millimeter bit, which if you look carefully, it's right there by that old drill index. There's one 35 there and I got an extra one. So anyway, that's all we're doing here today. I don't think you need to, me to show you what I'm doing. I just wanted to, uh, because you've seen the process of me gluing up these uh, tongue and groove doors and if uh, panels. If you haven't, just look back in my uh, archive of videos of how you uh, mill all this lumber into tongue and groove and how I glue it up. I'm not going to include it in this video, but I'm going to show like the final finishing. So, And then we'll go to the lake on the next video, the next video concerning these doors, and hang all the doors and finish up the kitchen. All right, guys. So we have a dozen doors glued up. Starting on the upper cabinets. This is one of the uppers. This, the sinks are done. I had to make a new piece for the sink, this upper. Um, the piece that was supposed to go in there was full of, it looked like machine marks from the mill, these gouges. I thought maybe I originally thought I was going to be able to sand those out or something, but my router was over there, so I just ran a new piece that I'd been using for a, you know, to protect the edges when I clamp it. But I'm going to be cutting a lot off these doors, so that 
beat up edge will be gone. Um, so we only have these five doors left to glue up. Actually, if I hurry, came back out tonight a couple times, I could get them all done. And uh, I'm stacking them up here to dry. And once they dry, I can scrape off the glue on the back and cut them to size, do what we got to do, machine them, sand them, finish them, and uh, then we'll have some doors. As I said, I got to put the pockets in them for the uh, hinges. But once I get the jig set up over there on the on the uh, drill press, which the hinges can't come with the setup jig. And this shows you where the two screws go and where the center of the bore goes. So all I got to do is set that up against my fence to where I want to run it. And then I can just slide the doors across the fence and bang, 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 set the depth with the stop, and that'll be done. So that's what's having a good drill press is for. That's one of the most important tools you can have in your shop is a good size drill press. And you can see I bought a big table for it with a fence. And I've got my grizzly bandsaw, and I've never turned any wood on my grizzly lathe, but I bought it because I was going down there. <laughs> anyway, all right, guys. Maybe I'll come back out tonight and finish a couple more pieces. Of course, we got our cutoff jig done, too. So we'll catch you later. All right, friends and fans, Bob's Barn Workshop. Here we are. We are back in the barn today. All the doors are out of the clamps. I stack them up flat to try to keep them from doing any warpage. And guess what? All the milling, well, not all the milling, but all of the clamping and uh, gluing is done. Um, the only milling I need to do is cut them to size with the table saw and my uh, circular saw. Then I need to route the edges with a chamfer bit. Then I'm going to drill all the pocket holes for the hinges on the drill press. And then I'm going to turn them over to the wife and she's going to start finishing them. Now we're going to do three coats of just clear uh, polyurethane on there. Now if you're going to hear a little rumble when we go by the furnace, but I want to tell you something. Polyurethane. If you buy the gallon jug of it, it's going to have a marking on it. And I forget what it's called. It says WA or WB or something like that, 350. That is the new politically correct version that is a very, very, very dark color. It looks like darker than maple syrup, and it tints your wood. I'm trying to see if I have anything here that says it on. But if you buy the quart sizes of the Minwax clear satin, it's the old stuff that isn't politically correct yet, and it's just a very light honey color, and it gives your wood a beautiful glow. So I hate the new stuff. The old stuff is still the bomb. So, yeah, here's my uh, flammables cabinet. I don't know how much this metal cabinet will do, but I figured it would smother some flames if it had to, maybe. Wouldn't stop an explosion. All right, so let's get to it. I have to scrape all the glue off the back of these doors. I wiped the front off, but you see every joint here has beads of glue. Well, so what do they do? I put down this piece of Formica, which if you saw the other way, I had it right side up with the smooth side up that I was gluing on. It's all covered with beads of glue, but the back side's pretty smooth. It won't rough, it won't scratch the uh, face. So now I'm gonna scrape all these off and uh, so I can, uh, and I may actually run them through. I, you can't see it buried under the tools and crap here. That's a 22 inch sander. I might run them through that just to do a quick flattening of the back. But all I'm going to do today is scrape all these beads off. And what tool am I going to use? Well, I inherited this tool from my dad. It's a red devil. Sorry, I'm stepping over the generator here. This is a red devil tool. It's got a chisel type scraper on this end. But what's really the bomb is this hook scraper. Now, see, I can draw this across that glue and pull it off. Got stuff around my mini bike here, my, my manly mini bike. Okay, so this we just, and see, it just takes that off and just 
one pass, really. And I didn't smear this around on the back, so the beads of glue should just be very close to just hanging down, you know, like droplets. And that's it. So I got to do that to all 20 some doors. And then after I get them all scraped, we'll move on to the next step. So I have that pile, this pile, and uh, these over here that I did previously. All right, let's get her set up. Uh, I'm going to try some, uh, I've got the beads all scraped off this, you saw me do that. I'm going to just try running this 100 grit over the top of this. This is going to make some noise. This is the uh, above the refrigerator door. I want to try to get off these globs of uh, glue and then maybe uh, we'll get ready to run through the belt sander there. joints so that it does plug up the belt sander belt so that's ready to go through the belt sander now the front because there is slight variations in these I do want to run it through the belt sander because what it's going to do it's going to even it out and then my chamfers won't look even so I'm just going to take the palm sander here uh, and do the front of these but for the back to flatten them out We'll do that. Of course, that's probably as good as it needs to be, doing that with the hand sander, to tell you the truth. If I sand that a little more, it would be more than fine. Let's move on. I'm going to put this guy back down. And we have quite a few more to do. This one glued itself to the tape on the back of the clamps. Put the blue tape on there to keep the uh, rust stains from getting on the wood from the glue. But uh, didn't always well stuck, and then they got really stuck. So if you put blue tape on anything, I suggest that you take it off almost immediately after you're done doing whatever job you were doing because it does have a tendency to set and be stuck for a long time. So I'm going to do one or more of these on camera and I've got another 20 to do. He's got a little bow to it, but I think it'll be fine. I'm trying to get away without adding cleats to the back of these. As long as the bow is in outward, we should be good. Ah, <laughs> uh, what did I do with my foxtail? Oh, here it is. I don't know who else calls it a foxtail. My family always calls it a foxtail. accentuate that. There you go. I just got to cut these to length and length. And this is center above the refrigerator. One is a little bit different size. CTR. All right, center. And so we move on. All right, guys, I'm going to do this to a lot of doors. Then I'll show you me sanding them. All right. So here we are. So here we are, folks. 
We are on the verge of the first cut of the first door. Now, I told you I wanted a three quarter inch overlay when the door was closed. So I'm looking at, this is for the slider beside the refrigerator where the door can't swing open. It just has to slide back and expose the end of the hole. The actual opening there is 21 inches. The part that's half covered is 20 inches. Drawer slides are 20 inches. So I'm going to cut this so that when this edge is even here, I could make that a little shorter, but I don't want to have a big gap there. This overlaps the, the front of this by three quarters of an inch to make it line up correctly. So I'm just going to cut that 21 and three quarters. I have the fence set up to 21 and three quarters. My saw is unplugged. It will take me a minute to get that plugged in. Not a minute. You know what I mean. Last few seconds here. And as I planned, I put the widest board on the edge that I was planning on cutting off. That way I can cut back and forth to get my dimensions correct. Well, this one lines up perfectly anyway to cut off just about exactly what I need to cut off. I'm just, I'm going to put the board I'm going to save against the fence and literally I'm just shaving a little bit off this. So this was almost the right size. So dust collection on. Dust collection on. Come on. Simple enough on that one. Now let's show cutting it to length. All right. So, um, come to the conclusion that the length of every lower door needs to be 29 and 7 eighths. So I'm just going to write that up here somewhere, just so I remember. All right. And I think what I'm going to do is we're going to see where this lies for 29 and 7 eighths. We've got 32, so that's an inch off each end. So I guess I can. Uh, I'm just going to cut the first one at about 30 and a half. Now this can be pretty random because it's the other one that counts. Now I'm going to go get some uh, blue tape and put it on that mark. So now that I know approximately where I'm going to cut this, I'm going to protect the front at least and the back edge. Where it wraps around, so don't chip it. And wrap it around. And then I'll make a new mark here. What did I say? 31 and a half. Or 30 and a half. Yeah, 30 and a half is what I said. Alright, so there's our mark. You seen it? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a ticket. Transfer this mark to the back. As I said, this, this is pretty random here until I measure it the second time. Is it going to fit? No. Okay, so that was a. On to the next one. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I thought that one was going to be narrow enough. What we can do, however, let's see if it's still around. I have another cutoff gig. And 
I just have to put this one up on blocks. I showed you this one before. This is for the slider on the bottom. It doesn't have to be as precise anyway. But see, I got to put this up on some blocks so I don't cut through the table. See? Now let's try something. Sanity check. I know these sides are parallel to each other. Cut <clears throat> once, measure twice, you know. I'm just going to run a line just like that. When I put my jig on again. See that that's perfectly parallel to that. And boy, oh boy, she looks pretty darn good. All right, so I've got them held in place. So I got power. Yes, I do. Slow. You don't want to rip your chip your boards edges. So you're wrapping it around keeps it from uh, tearing out the corner. But on the back, you don't have to worry so much because the blade is pulling up. So we didn't get any ragged cuts. And you just switch this way around. So this is the crude way to do it. But I have that jig for the rest of them. I'll show you that when I get to that. I'm going to do the same thing at this end to cut it to the right way. All right. All right, guys and gals. So I ran into a little hang up when I was cutting these doors, in particular the uh, two sets of doubles. The problem is with the widths of the board that I had, if I was to cut so that the two boards in the centers of the doors came together like there was a joint there, that it would leave like half or three quarters of an inch along this edge that I cut off. So what I got thinking about is, is making the doors come together with a half a board in the center. So that as you looked across them, you know, your, your joint lines would be lined up other than the straight cut. And that gave me a lot more board on the outside edge. So that's why you'll see this inch and a half board on this edge because that's uh, where they have to mate up in the middle. So that's it. I'm just going to cut them all, finish okay, cutting Okay, I just wanted length. to show you the result of what we were talking about. Because I didn't want to make the door edges too narrow for the hinges. I split the center one into a single... Uh, ...door. And so you can see that board looks almost I don't know that I'm going to do much to this edge other than soften it so you don't bust your knuckles but I'm going to leave the chamfers here and it'll be pretty cool it'll look pretty nice all right so I'm down to the last door
couple of doors here. Actually, four doors on the upper cabinets that I had uh, decided that I was going to take the center joint. And butt it together like this so it makes a full board, see? Because this edge would have wound up way too narrow if I'd have taken another inch and a half. It would have been just a little bit past the chamfer. So we're bringing them together like this. That's why I didn't put a chamfer on this. Now I'm going to soften that edge a little bit. I'm going to have to so you don't bash your brains out if you bang into it. But now all the routering of the edges is done. What I have left to do next before I sand and finish oh, it feels good to get the earplugs out which are nothing but paper towels is I have to clean off my drill press and set up my 35 millimeter bit for my pocket hinges and as I showed you before I got the jig here somewhere here's the jig for the setup once we get it set up with the fence we can bang them off in a hurry so I gotta clean that up and set that all up so I got my setup dialed in for drilling the hinge holes and what I did if I can find it here is I have already drilled a test hole to set the depth and you set the stop on here on your drill press and then uh, for the upper doors I don't want the hinges too far apart because that will create a lot of leverage you know so I'm trying to think when nothing happens I probably should put them only about two inches from the end because that way but I gotta think about my door openings there an inch and a quarter, or no, three quarters of an inch overlap, yeah. So, yeah, I better keep them at three inches. So I made a mark three inches on either side of the blade. I adjusted the fence depth, the fence depth by using the jig that came with the hinges. And you put it right on here like this, you make a dot. You line the brad point of your bit up, set the depth of your fence. That's as simple as it gets. How far is that from the back of the fence to the center of the bit? It's about like mm, seven eighths of an inch. All right. So I got to make sure that I drill. All right, one of these boards is slightly wider than the other, and that's the hinge side. And that's it. This is the hinge side. So I need to drill the two hinges right here. This is one of the smaller upper cabinets. All right, so we're going to turn on the noisy uh, air dust collector. I've got my dust collector hose hooked up here to catch the fine dust. I got the depth set. I bring it into the mark. Bucket here that I can dump my uh, pearls in. 
to put it right under the row press here so when I shove those up and down, they fall right in. Okay, dumping them into the trash. One more drill. hinges, the good ones, and uh, these just hook over the edge of the door and they fit right in here like so, and you line them up with a square or something, and then you put your two screws right in here and then this screws into the door frame, and then your door slides over like that when you open it, but this is in the closed position and that's three quarters of an inch from there to there, which is what I compensated for, so let's hope it all works. And then they swing way around like that. So, actually I could go, well I'm going to sand these anyway. No, these aren't going to get sanded anymore on the back. I'm calling the back good. It's just the inside of the door. I suppose I could, uh, take a pencil. I guess I should have done it. Well, it actually has an outline of the hole. Let's see how that lines up. Yeah, that'll do it. The holes seem to be a little bit farther in than these holes indicate. generator at work and named it the Pulsomatic 5000 just for the heck of it well we can use that jig when we go to put the hinges on well, of course I won't be putting the hinges on until I get to the lake but now I need to run my router around the back and I'm not going to be too particular about that and the warpage so I'm just going to do that with the hand router next I'm just going to mount up this little eighth inch round over My black wrenches are the Dewalt. I love this router. Of course, the depth adjustment is much nicer on this than that old port of cable. That's why I need a router lift for that one. All right. All right. So now I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to look. I'm going to raise it up. Now I see the radius. And I'm going to lock it. And slider, that's one of my biggest doors, one of the biggest ones. We're just going to go right around this. And then I'll just hit the corners with the uh, do 
Hopefully this mat will Soften that edge so you don't ding your hands on it or anything. Your knuckles, I'll be the one knuckling it. And take a little bit of sandpaper, this one's pretty rough. But for example, it'll work. Got a little deep there. Now for these corners, I'm just gonna. Too difficult to try to run the router. Over those corners, so I'm just doing that. Alright. No big deal to that. Just run it over the corners for a little bit. That's, I gotta get a better piece of paper though. Yeah, I hear you griping at me. We're gonna do one more. Just a little one. I don't know where this rubber mat came from, or actually even what it is, but it seems to do the purpose. Touching it with a little 220 here. And as I said before, I'm just got another sanding disc here. Just hitting those sharp points and corners a little bit. They don't feel so uncomfortable. You know, you know. I have 20 doors to do this to. And a final sanding before we start finishing. That might be interesting, huh? These will have a final sanding before. Boy, that one's bold. Woo! That one might need backing plates on it. But they're supposed to be rustic, right? Alright, so I'm going to do that to all 20 doors. Now, the next time you'll see me, we'll be uh, final sanding and finishing. All right, well, here we go, your favorite part. You know, I always make you suffer through the final uh, piece. This is the last door I need to break the bead on and sand down. <laughs> Sanding the uh, end grain here rather uh, vigorously. And then I 
I take the edge of the folded paper and I clean the burrs out of the V grooves. Doesn't take much because they're just slightly attached when the router skipped over that gap. See? And just soften that a little bit. Take the sharp edge off. Something they don't do on modern cabinets mostly. I've got cabinets that have been in my house probably 20 years now on the bottom edges of the doors and the edges of the shelves have that super sharp edge on them. So you bump your knuckles and uh, take some skin off on the stupid things. So we're just softening that sharp corner just a tad. It really isn't a good way to run the router on that little piece that's left exposed. And the burrs. They're only on one side because the router bit was uh, coming this way. And when it cut into this edge, of course, it was shearing into the grain, cut it clean. But this edge here it was spinning off. All right. Knock off any little fuzzy parts that are left from the process here. Okay, that's done. This will be my project for the day. Yeah, we did this edge. Okay, so I've done the backs already. Sorry, I guess maybe you missed me sanding the top for that. I was just sand along the edges and cleaning out the chamfers here. Some of these are a little rough, but that's all right. We're just going to clean the dirt out when we finish them. Right? They're supposed to look rustic, almost like you know, not even rough cut pine. So that's it. I need to final finish sanding the front. So what I'm going to do is I will come over here, I'll sand the back one more time to 220, I'll flip it over, finish the front, and uh, stack them up and we'll start putting the polyurethane on them. Alright guys and gals, that's it for now. Take care. God bless. We'll see you next time at Bob's Barn Workshop. And don't forget, please, subscribe, uh, like, share, like, 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 so that I can get seen by others and uh, promote my channel. I'm, I'm growing, but I'm growing slowly. So let's keep it up. Thank you, guys.